A world of bookish adventures. My name is Shannon. And I'm Amanda, and we are excited to share with you today's podcast. Today, we are so excited to introduce indie author Hannah James, our first indie author spotlight on a world of bookish adventures. I had the privilege of being an ARC reader for Hannah's new book, Air Undeniable, and I am so excited to have her on the podcast. Hannah is married and lives and works in South Korea where she teaches English. So she's always loved reading and would read until about 4 a.m., nap until 8 a.m., and then just get up and keep reading. So she started writing when she was in high school and really enjoys storytelling. Viable is her first published book, and she is just so proud of this book, baby. Welcome, Hannah. Welcome, Hannah. We are so thrilled to have you with us today, and I can't wait for our listeners to get to know you better. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. So, Hannah, why don't we just start off with having you tell a little bit about yourself for our listeners? Well, I'm the youngest of three kids. I have two older brothers. They are both in my home country, South Africa. I saw them quite a while ago, but they are all the way over there. And other than that, this is my first published book. I'm in the author, and I'm also a beverage goblin. Uh, so I always have at least three drinks with me. That's something you need to know about me. One of them is always coffee. <laughs> I love beverage goblin. Like, you know, I've heard book dragon and now we have beverage goblin. So I feel like we're creating our own fantasy universe here. Yeah, I think that works. Hannah, I know you live in Korea now, correct? Yes. So how did that happen? I'm just curious. I know we're going to get to the book and we're going to make sure our listeners know all about your book, but I'm a little curious about how we got from South Africa to Korea. To make a very long story very short, uh, in 2017, I had just come a bad relationship and I said to my mom, I need a change of scenery. At that point, I had never left South Africa. I'd never seen any other country in the world. And then my mom said, don't you have that friend in Korea? Message her and ask her how she got there. And so I did. She put me in touch with her agent. And a couple of months later, I was on the plane headed to Korea. One way flight. I love it. One of the things that shared with our listeners that a man and I have this passion for travel and this passion to explore the world and how that combines with our love for reading. And I feel like you just left the unknown, you left your comfort zone and went to a completely different country and reestablished your life. And I just think that's amazing. Definitely very brave. It was quite scary. I'm going to be honest. It was quite scary. It was my first time ever on a plane. I had never, ever flown anywhere. My first flight ever was 18 hours to the other side of the world. Well, I'm even more impressed because that is definitely a flight experience for your very first time starting a new life in a new country on the other side of the world. That's amazing. Thank you. It was a trip, literally. (laughs) Literally and figuratively. (laughs) What is your favorite thing about being an author? I think it's creating a world for people to get lost in. I know a lot of people use reading as a form of escapism. I do. I love that I am able to create a world and this life on paper for people to get lost in. I feel like I'm helping. I know from a from a reader perspective, there is nothing better for me than to be able to get time to escape into a book and to fall in love with the with the characters, to fall in love with the world building and the magic systems and everything that goes into a fantasy book. And I can see, as you're sharing from an author perspective, how incredible that must be for you to know you're doing that for people you're giving them the escape that they need from their lives and the craziness that goes on to escape into the world so i could i'm not an author i would love to be an author one day but but right now i'm not an author and i can absolutely see why that would be such a draw to create the books that you're creating and so i enjoy creating the worlds and then 
you know, when you get any kind of feedback from someone saying, you know, I just read this scene and this made me feel X, Y, Z, I've completely lost myself on page 205, that just makes it worth it. Getting the reactions from people, seeing the world that you've crafted affects people in different ways. That's my second favorite. And I have something I want to add, but I don't want to do it yet. So... I'm going to hold my, hold my response to that. And why don't you tell our listeners about your new release, Air Undeniable? So Air Undeniable is a contemporary paranormal romance. I feel like I want to stress that it is not a fantasy because it takes place in a real world setting. So it isn't a completely new world that I have crafted for the purposes of the book. The female main character is... A basic everyday middle girl. She's a student. She works a part-time job. And then she meets a young man from Europe who then turns out to be way more than she expected him to be. She did not expect for him to be the vampire crown prince. It's really hard to tell you exactly everything about the book without spoiling many, many things. Well, I know from an ARC reader perspective, one of the things that I really loved about your book and what drew me to your book, it is a vampire storytelling, yes, but it's a vampire storytelling in a Greek mythology landscape, but it's from, and I won't use the book names, but maybe from other vampire books that you've read that sparkle or or do other things your it's weird for me to say your book feels more realistic when we're talking about a vampire fantasy world that you're creating but but when i read your book i connected with your characters so deeply and i was so what's the word i was so invested in your characters and not only that i'm going to say i was invested in your secondary characters because sometimes i feel like we read books and we're all about the main protagonist in the book but you know the other characters are just supporting of them and i feel like in your book not only do i find this fantasy world realistic I'm invested in all of your characters, not just your main protagonist. And was that kind of your intent when you were creating this book that you wanted all of your characters to have a a solid value to the storytelling? Yes, yes, definitely. I think when we meet someone, you know, in in a new relationship situation, you never just meet the person their people also become a part of your world. So if your new significant other has a best friend, you will meet the brothers, the sisters, the parents, and they will also become part of the relationship in some way. So I don't feel like a relationship, even one on paper, can ever just exist as a single unit without being connected and affected by the people around the relationship. So I needed, as you call them, the the supporting characters to actually really support the relationship and to be fleshed out and well-rounded individuals and not just to be there for the sake of being there. Secondary characters. And what came to mind for me is Lord of the Rings. And I feel like that's something pretty much everyone can relate to because obviously, oh, okay, it's all about Frodo. But if the other hobbits that were there weren't so enjoyable and engaging and lovable, it would not have added, you know, there would would not have been as strong and, and memorable as a story. I mean, I think relationships between people are really important. And I think maybe some of that is a therapist in me coming out, but it's, it's just, I think it is definitely worth the effort when authors take the time to do that. I definitely think specifically for the male main character, his his friendships and his relationships with his family and with his, shall we call them his people, they showcase different aspects of his personality so that it's not just this one thing. I feel like in a lot of vampire novels, the vampire is seven feet of raging misogyny and hate and that's all he is and i really wanted jonathan in this case to be more than that 
to have personality and feelings and a sense of humor and a little bit of sensitivity. I needed him to be a person and a vampire. I think that is fantastic. And I actually think that is a great lead in to our next question, which is who is your favorite character in the story that you created? It's Jonathan. It's the male main character. Just because the man, the man has lived such a long life and he has so much wisdom and so much, I want to say, flavor to who he is and so many nuances. I just find him very interesting, you know, the way he thinks and the way he interprets situations. He's my favorite. I also like my female main character. Christina is me in many ways. We have a very similar way of talking, similar way of responding to things. So she's a little bit of me, a little bit of my best friend. You know, I really like Christina. I feel like you created Christina to be strong, but also vulnerable. And I think sometimes that's a really hard mix to make in a character. But I love that, like, when we first meet Christina, she is independent. She is heading to grad school. She's trying to figure out student loans. She's a manager at her job. I mean, and she's being met with these, I'm going to call them real life obstacles. I mean, I think everyone listening can one of those scenarios that I just said, you know, someone can relate to. So she's invested in all these, but she's figuring it out. So when she meets Jonathan by this rare chance meeting while he's there and he helps her, it's it's not in a you can't handle it sort of way or I need to say sort of way. And I really like how I feel like you brought these two characters together from a position of strength and then they grow together as opposed to one is weak, one is strong and has to save the other. So I like the way you wrote Christina because I feel like we don't get that a lot in fantasy books. I really did not want Christina to be a damsel in distress who is waiting around to be saved by the tall, handsome hero. That it's a fine, perfectly fine thing in and of itself, but I needed her to be able to save herself. And for him to just be there and help, didn't want him to be her savior in all ways. And I think you definitely hit that. Now, there are moments in the book that he does save her, but they're from situations that I'm not going to do any spoilers here, but they're from situations where she is unable to save herself because of the surrounding event going on and such. And those are just the good, uh, get your hands off of her, you know, what did you do to my woman type of moments that I think fantasy lovers just curl their toes, uh, for lack of a better word, you know, with. So I think you do give us those wonderful moments that we as fantasy lovers love to read, but it's not the whole book. It's not every scenario. And you created those moments, again, to be almost realistic that nobody in, I'm thinking of like the bar scene, for example, is the one that's in my head. Nobody in Christina's position could have saved themselves. <laughs> you know what I mean? And such. And then actually her best friend was the catalyst for Jonathan saving her. So we even had another female who was strong to initiate that whole scenario as well. So you did bring the female power to it. We need that. We need that. We need girl power. We also needed Christina to not be afraid of him in a sense. Has a quite a big personality and, a, and an imposing presence. I mean, he's physically quite big. He's what six foot two. She's not afraid of him. She's not afraid to stand up to him, to defy him, to tell him, "Ah, oh, no, you can sit down. I've got this." And I also felt like that was important. Having come out of a bad relationship where I was the one who always just let things happen and just like, "Okay, yeah, that's fine. You do that. I'll sit down. It's okay." to not have her do that, to stand up for herself. 
anybody that has read your book can definitely see that work that you put into the character development of that. And I know, Amanda, you haven't read the book yet, which is an interesting kind of having having this interview with what has read, when is not. But but I think it's an any perspective that what do you think, Amanda? Like, do you like these fantasy books that have that real strong female protagonist and the main character's love story and um, life story come together from a, a point of strength? I think it definitely adds to it. I'm not really into romance in books, or, but uh, being a sci-fi fan and a fantasy fan for so long, I typically do find more strong characters there. You know, since I used Lord of the Rings earlier, I mean, you can't you, you can't get stronger than Eowyn, right? You know, so I think that it definitely adds to a story when it's from a place of I want to be with my partner because they're awesome, not I want to be with my partner because I am don't have a choice or don't feel like I have an, any other options. So I think that is much more relatable to most people, honestly. And Hannah, I don't think this is a spoiler, but, you know, potential spoiler, I guess I'll throw out there, is your book, Air Undeniable, ends on a cliffhanger and cannot wait. So so because it ends with a cliffhanger, I'm going to assume there's going to be multiple books in this series. So is that something you've thought about? How many books? Where do you want to go with this series? Yes. yes. Uh, so initially, when I first wrote it, I first wrote Air Undeniable and then it was called Air Apparent. I first wrote what, you know, Air Apparent in 2009, the first draft, and then I let it for some reason, and I only picked it up in 2021 again, and then it became Air Undeniable, and it went from being one story that was going to end with her leaving with him, and it evolved into a trilogy. So that is where we are right now. Right now, it's a trilogy. It might become four, but right now it is at three books in the series. And I'm just going to throw out there as a as a, a lover of your books and, and someone who, you know, supports you on your arc and your street teams and such that I hope you take the SJM multiverse pill and I would love some little uh, different point of view books. Um, like she did with her A Court of Thorns and Roses series, where we get to know some of those secondary characters. Because my, because our listeners that haven't read this, we definitely recommend you picking it up and you reading it, because you'll see exactly what we're talking about. How the friends of Jonathan, the family of Jonathan, um, the history um, that they all have together is so strong in the little moments we get that I feel like there's so much story that needs to be said and, and so much backstory of, of Jonathan's parents and such that, that I hope just from a fan of yours that we get a lot more than three, even four books in the series. Is it okay if I don't make you any promises? <laughs> Yes, I absolutely am not sitting here looking for any promises, but you know, and I'm sure any listeners who have read your books, they're going to agree with me. So I don't know, maybe some of your fandom will, will start, you know, suggesting some of these things. Oh, oh, it has happened. It has happened. Um, my alpha readers have been hounding me. What advice would you give to someone who wants to write but is afraid to, like me and Shannon? Write it. Right. You can't, can't edit a blank page and a first draft need not be anything other than just be there. For all you know, the thing that you are writing that you think is absolute nonsense might very well be somebody's new favorite book ever. So write the story. Not everyone's gonna like it. Not everyone's gonna hate it. Inevitably, there will be someone who loves it. So just do it. So your book came out the summer of 2023, just been released not too long ago. So 2009, you said that you finished 
the first draft. So can you give our listeners, you know, to go along with that advice, maybe the journey to getting the book published this summer as you did? Well, if memory serves, I picked it up again November of 2021. And I don't know, I just felt like the story needed to be, fin- to be finished. It needed to be told. And then I basically did a rewrite. I did keep many aspects of the original concept, but a lot of it I completely reworked. Jonathan's whole personality changed. In the original, Christina had an older brother named Eric. Eric was scrapped. She's an only child. I think I ended up finishing the trilogy. It went really fast. In my case, it went really fast. Started in November, and I think by February or March, I had finished the trilogy. So that went really, really quickly. From there, though, you know, the process of alpha reading, beta reading, editing, proofreading, cover art, all of that, that took quite a bit. When you're writing, because the characters in your books are are so strong. All we've talked quite a bit about that today. Do you keep some type of like I've seen other authors that have that keep family histories and character uh, bios and pages and things they do to kind of them consistent and let their individual personalities develop through your books. And do you do the same? Is it your process the same thing for your characters? Do you really kind of invest in backstories and character growth for each character or do they just sort of evolve as you write? Uh, I think it's a bit of both. Some of them evolved as I wrote, and some of them I actually sat down and wrote a chunk of back history, chunk of backstory, and then implemented the character into the story. So it's a it's a mix of both. For example, Jonathan has a Russian friend. He's just fun. He's fun to write. It's super fun to write his his Russian accent. And I don't know where he came from. He just appeared. He knocked on the door and he was there and I was like, well, okay, well, hello, come in, come in, we'll have a party, come in. The others were definitely all planned from the beginning. His mom and dad, his sister, and his best friend. The Russian friend and Christina's best friend, they introduced themselves. They weren't part of the original plan to be there. I think that's so awesome. And I love when authors share that because I feel like, and Amanda, I don't know if you felt the same way, but I almost feels like these characters become, you know, sentient beings in your book. And I've heard other authors say, you know, the characters sort of tell story and I'm just writing their story like they're along for the ride. And I just think that's such an amazing part of the writing process. I'm a big Neil Gaiman fan and I have read some interviews he's done with people and uh, he talks about the same thing. Like he feels like he needs to respect the characters and just kind of let them just evolve naturally. And, And it's almost like he is getting to know a real person instead of something that is, you know, a ink on the page. So I think that is a very just fascinating process, how we are so interconnected to to our characters. And I think that that is on the reader side too, because we get so emotionally, mentally, spiritually involved with them sometimes where, you know, so every once in a while they'll throw a curveball at us. We're like, no, why did you do that? That's not who you are. And I think that it's just saying how we make those connections the same way we would with our friends or family in real life. Hannah, our listeners know, where can they find their own copy of Air Undeniable? For the moment, Air Undeniable is available on Kindle Unlimited, regular Kindle, and on paperback via Amazon. I'm still working on having it available through other retailers as well. But for now, it's on Amazon is where you can find it. Where can readers find you and what are your social media sites? And just so everyone knows, of course, we will share these on our our social media as well. Okay, right now you can find me on Amazon. Yes, Amazon author page, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Also Facebook. All the sites, all all the good sites that we are on. So Hannah, 
as we're starting to wrap up our awesome interview and thank you so much for being with us any last thoughts that you want to share with our listeners today if you decide to pick up air undeniable and i would be very honored if you did you might not find the a vampire as you would expect a vampire to be the way that my vampires think the way they talk is not the usual this was you know something that people have commented and observed in the past so it might not be what you would expect of a vampire but i'd be honored if you took a look anyway well, I definitely recommend this book as I shared at the beginning of the podcast. I met Hannah on TikTok when she was looking for ARC readers. I applied, I was accepted, fell in world building and her story. And since then, Hannah gotten to know each other. And as friends, I will call us friends. I hope you feel the same way, Anna. But we've definitely gotten to know each other. And I am thrilled to be a part of your street team and to support you. And I I am so thrilled that you are our first indie author spotlight on our new podcast adventure that Amanda and I are doing. And I appreciate you joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm, I feel very lucky to have you as my friend and also as a member of my street team and my review team. Thank you so much for being there. Because now that you have had Hannah come join us on the show, I have a new book series to check out. So I'm ready for this. Amanda, I just want to add, I know you said you don't really read romance, but I feel like the romance and the, shall I call it the thrill, the suspense of it is dual parts of the plot. So it's not just romance focused all the way. And that's, that is perfect for me. I can, I can do both. I just don't like when it's just one, but I will be happy to check it out if it's, if it's got lots of the, the adventure and the heart pounding stuff in there. So I, I am looking forward to checking it out. It does a bit. I believe it has a couple of giggles in there as well, if I'm not mistaken. So I feel like it's a, a bit of a mix of romance focus. Sounds amazing. M maybe what we'll have to do is we'll have to do a follow up podcast with you, Hannah, once Amanda has read the book. So once Amanda has read the book, I think we need to make this a part two. We need to have you back on and then Amanda can share her thoughts, ask questions, and, and we can just sort of have a part two. I, I think that might be a good thing. And I think our listeners would like that as well. If for it, I'm, I'm ready. I'm here. I think that'll be really fun. Yeah, it's, I think that sounds really, it would be really interesting to see the whole process play out when you go from just kind of checking out as if I'm a listener on the podcast and then actually reading one of the books. I love it. So Hannah, thank you so much for joining us for today's recording. And definitely listeners, please go on Amazon, check out Hannah's book. It, that is what these podcasts that Amanda and I are doing every month are all about, is to support indie authors by not only getting their books out there, getting them out there, but to financially help them. You know, she's got a lot of work and time in this. And how we best can support them is by buying a copy of the book. And I will say that even though I was an ARC reader and Hannah provided me an e-copy of the book, I also also went out and bought her book as well because I so believe in supporting indie authors. So check out, we'll have all of her social media links as well as her Amazon link on our Instagram and our TikTok as well as our YouTube page. So please check it out, spend some money, support these indie authors because that is why we are all here. So our next podcast, Shannon is going to be sharing part two of her Switzerland adventure. And I believe this will be of interest for our fans, Court of Thorns and Roses, just like the other one. Oh, Amanda, I am so, and Hannah, if you've read the book, I think you'll like it too, because I am so excited to share my journey to Valaris and Akatar readers. You definitely don't want to miss this. Switzerland lovers, you're going to love it too. I think it's going to have a little bit for everybody. And I cannot wait to share that bookish adventure with you guys. I'm definitely looking forward to that.
So thank you everyone for being a part of our podcast. We look forward to connecting with you each week. And as always, we invite you to join us on our social media pages, as well as to like subscribe to us on YouTube, as well as whatever your favorite podcast platform is. And you can find all of the information on our link tree. And don't forget to share your own bookish stories and adventures with us. Please either fill out the form in our link tree or email us directly at awobapodcast at gmail.com for a chance to have Amanda and I share them on a future podcast. Until next time, read more books. And then go explore. Bye, Bye everyone.